So I have to go on a trip today for business, so I'll be out of town, which means I have to water all my plants and get them ready. And my friend's gonna be taking care of them. However, you probably saw that I did a Hoya care and propagation video. And if you haven't, I'll link up to that in the description below and also here so you could actually see it because it's very informative. But I figured before I would leave, I have a little bit of time and I could actually show you some of the Hoyas and where I'm growing them in my house. So I figured I'd start in the kitchen, then I could go to the workroom and then my bedroom because that's primarily where I'm growing them in my house. I started growing Hoya probably around three years ago now and I quite like them as a plant group. I wish I actually had a little bit more space for them, but for right now I have to make do with what I have. But my kitchen, I have a lot of Hoya here in a small space, largely because I get these like northeast facing window light and it's really gentle. Today is a pretty overcast day because it's going to be raining, so I'm not getting as much light as I typically do here. And some of the Hoya that I have actually probably prefer to be in a little bit more light, which I'll try to point those out. But a good one here is Hoya Australis. This is a great example of maybe one that could require a little bit more light. It's a bit more of the succulent kind of variety of, of Hoya. There's other Hoya Australis that aren't that quite that succulent. And then this one is a cutting of a Hoya publicalix, and a lot of these get some really beautiful colored, different coloration of flowers. Some are a little bit more pink, some are purple, and I have a lot of publicalix around my house, so you'll be able to see some of those. I think this is called Hoya parvifolia. I just got it, although I am questioning whether that is the actual species of this Hoya. The leaves look a little bit different than some of the type specimens that I've seen, but uh, I think that's one of the challenges with Hoya. If it's not flowering, it's very hard to identify them because sometimes the leaves look a little different even within the species, depending on what kind of growing conditions you're giving them. So I'm not quite sure yet. I'll have to wait till it flowers. This is uh, Hoya kensiana back here, which is another plant that probably requires a little bit more sun, so I'll probably pull him out of this little corner. And then this one right here is Hoya publicalix. This is another type of version of Hoya publicalix. Gets a different color flower than the one that I had pointed out earlier. Let's see what else I have growing here. Oh, Hoya abavada. Love this one. This one was a little bit shinier before, but I've had this growing for quite some time. You see some of the, the new kind of tendrils starting to grow out of here. Hoya, it's a type of cultivar, Iris Marie a much thinner kind of leaf, but I love the growth structure so far. It's, I think it's a little bit more of a pendant kind of hanger, not necessarily um, a climber like some of them. Oh, this one's um, Hoya carnosa crinkle. You can see it has kind of a little bit more like roughly leaves. Looks like it's a little parched. I probably need to water that before I leave. Hmm. I'm, I'm certain I'm probably missing a, a few. Oh, here's, here's one over here, Hoya deciana. I actually lost a few leaves on this one, but it was really just kind of like in shock because I had taken this as a cutting and it was sent to me, and, but it's stabilized now, so that's a good thing. Oh, this one here that I have kind of going in a little plastic bag is a cutting, and it's a relatively long cutting so I'm not sure if I should actually cut it in some different places, but this is uh, Majulidii from the Philippines. It's a fuzzier version of Hoya. Fuzzier ones actually are a little bit harder to root. So I am a little bit concerned for this guy because I have them in a little bit moist sphagnum with a little plastic bag around it to kind of keep in the humidity, but I definitely don't want this one to perish while I'm away. You could see that the leaves are starting to pucker a little bit because it doesn't have a root yet. So I was a little bit bummed that the cutting came without a root. Usually the ones with a little bit of a fuzzier stem are a little bit more challenging to root. So we just have to be a little bit more mindful about that. Hoya carii I have growing here. This is another great example of one that could probably use a little bit more light. So we'll see how it goes. I could easily move this a little bit further away from my southwest facing windows on the other side of my house. Um, Hoya breviolata, it's another cute one. And then if you come down here, 
you'll notice I, I'm packed with plants under this grow light here. Since I installed this grow light, it's been a mad dash to kind of fit as many plants as possible down here. This is a uh, Hoya bilobata, which I have growing. It's a little bit more of a succulent one. Hoya comingiana, which is one of my favorite. I had this actually growing in my back room, but now I have it growing here. Kind of like has a grow growth structure that goes upright and then hangs down. And you'll notice I have some kind of this uh, calcareous oyster shells here because it does require a little bit more alkaline soil. These are Hoya carnosa crimsons, and the ones, the curly ones in the back, the ones that look a little roughly, are Hoya carnosa compactas, otherwise known as Hindu ropes. I have a Hindu ropes. I have a variegated version and some non-variegated versions back there. Hoya mellifluous. It's a little dirty. Probably when I water, sometimes it just gets a little dirty. Hoya carnosa again. Hoya bella, which is sometimes considered a subspecies of lanceolata. Hoya cuttings back here that I took because I was propagating. This is an unknown cultivar, but I think it's like Banangui or something like that. I have to double check with some more Hoya experts who know a little bit more than I. And I also have another Hoya publicalix back here. I really love their flowers. So I'm really looking forward to them flowering. I have one that is about to flower in the um, back room, which I'll show you. But all these little tendrils and things like this, I mean, you would keep those on, definitely keep these on because that's where, you know, the flowers um, and the leaves start to emerge. But something like this, here, I'm just gonna grab this. You could see that these are like little dead sticks. This, there's no, flower that's going to grow on any of these. I'll show you what the peduncle and the spur looks like so I can, um, in the back room, so I'll show you that you're not cutting off anything of importance. Yeah, nothing is going to grow on these little ends, so you could actually clip those right off. Oh, I'm sure there's probably some others back there, but I can't get to them. Here are some of my propagated cuttings that I had. They need a little bit more water. You can see this was probably the one that didn't have a root, but the others have taken on quite nicely, and I do need to water those. See that? This one looks like my chicken ate it. <laughs> See that? So this is my kitchen table, and I have this Hoya carnosa growing on here. And this is my Hoya macrophylla, which could probably use a little bit more light. I'm actually growing some macrophylla variegatas also in my other back room, and they seem to be growing a little bit better. But I would say that this is starting to get a little bit too dark for Hoyas. Generally speaking, Hoyas don't like to be in a tremendous amount of light. So I used to have some growing near, very close to my southwest facing window, but I kind of pulled those back. But if you talk to some growers, most of them are growing their Hoya under 50 to 80% shade cover. So that's a quite a bit of shade uh, comparatively to other plants. So yeah, so you wanna be giving your Hoyas a little bit more diffuse light. It's gonna be better for them. But this is starting to get into kind of like really low light zone. And so you probably don't wanna be growing too many Hoyas past this. You'll see I have a lot of lower light tolerant plants and some grow lights here. I could probably grow them under grow lights, but I'm not gonna risk it. All right, this is my work room, new and improved work room, because I got rid of the bed, because I wanna start working a little bit more in here. But uh, here's a grow light, one of my Soltech Solutions grow lights, which I'll include a link to, because they are just a great savior for the in interior of your space. But I have a number of Hoya kind of hiding out here. This is Hoya Bandagong right here, which is a cute little succulent species. And then I have, um, oh, there's so many, Hoya Wyetii, little, little cutting right here. Not too much of a big guy. The great thing is you could just get little tiny cuttings and then watch them grow. Hoya Adorata. All that new growth is kind of like has a bronzy new growth. 
So this is Hoya Ban Nagang as well, another one they have growing here. And Hoya Daitara, this might be a little bit too far underneath the light. I might have to move that because it's got a thinner leaf. Might not want to be really up to the, to the light. Oh, this one I think it looks like it got broken. What a bummer. I might have to um, take this as a cutting. I mean, this is fine because I have this as a cutting, but I might have to cut this and then uh, hopefully that this will actually root because there's not much of a node on there. So I'm not sure how that actually happened, but looks like it's still okay. So I'll see it when I get back, but this is Hoya Imperialis and that gets to be really big. It's also likes to be under a lot of light. And this is Hoya Bilobata, which is starting to look a little drought stricken. So I'm going to need to water these. Under this light, you'd be surprised like how much actual intensity of light it actually gets. And then this is also another Hoya Publicalix right here. All right, so I have one growing in here in this little light fixture that I got. This is Hoya Diversifolia, a little bit more of a succulent species in there. And Fusco Marginata, which is looking pretty good. This one I'm not actually sure the name of. I'll have to figure this one out, an unnamed one, but it has really iconic leaves, so I think it'll probably be easier to figure out because some leaves look all the same, but this one I think looks a little bit different with its leaf margins. Another Publicalix that I got, this is the one that I kind of pulled off the shelf and it got wrapped around so many different things and pulled everything down. <laughs> um, Hoya Revolvus down here. I'm actually getting a grow light under this shelf to actually provide a little bit more light here because even though I get southwest facing window light coming in, on a day like this, there's not a lot of light coming in. And because this is under a shelf, it's fine. It's a little bit more diffuse light, but I think that most of these plants could handle a little bit more of a grow light as well. Up here is another Hoya Publicalix. I think this one's the Hawaiian purple one. Hoya Waietii variegata. Let me put these scissors down because I'll show you that this Hoya Eskimo has a flower, a little inflorescence. Let me show you this up close. So this is the inflorescence. It's obviously not blooming. This right here, that little brown piece is the spur. So you don't want to cut that off because, or this is the peduncle that the inflorescence is part of. This will kind of like dry out a little bit and look like a dry bit, but that is actually where the flower develops. So you could see that there's, it's been flowering for a few years here because um, it, the spur gets longer and longer as it starts to flower. So you could see that there's another peduncle coming out of here. You can't even see a spur, so this might be this, the first time that this is going to become a little inflorescence right here. But I found that these uh, Hoya Cronia, Cronianas Eskimos have back, actually been very good flowering plants. So depending on the Hoya, you might be having some that flower a little bit more in the autumn. You might have some that flower a little bit more in the spring, in the summertime. It really depends on the Hoya species that you have. But I have a lot of um, Hoya Croniana Eskimos. Here's another one. Oh yeah, here's another flower that's going to be coming out. Looks like the new time that this is going to flower because there's not much of a spur. There might be one spur. I can't remember if it was this one or the last one that actually started to flower. And last year they flowered in July. So this seems like they could potentially flower a little bit earlier, which could be kind of cool. This one is also Hoya croniana, but no, lacanosa, sorry. This is Hoya lacanosa, but um, no, no inflorescence there. This, I can't even remember. Oh, Hoya Fitchii, of course. Yeah, this is Hoya Fitchii. And this one that has this kind of fuzzy leaf. I don't know if you could see the fuzz on this leaf. This is Hoya affinis, which has been growing really well. So I have a lot of Hoya back here. Let me try to get, this is Seria genensis, this dark one back here. It's kind of poking up a little, little tendril 
get to the light. And then this one hanging down is Hoya publicalix, another one. And this is also another Hoya diversifolia. I think it's formerly known as Hoya crassipes. Thicker succulent one, so this one likes to scramble and prefers a little bit of more of the southwest facing window. And then this is Ohoya macrophylla variegata, but um, this is also growing in a little bit more light than the other one that I'm growing in the kitchen, and that seems to be working out well. And then I have Ohoya carii variegata right here, which seems to be thriving, but we'll see. I have to kind of figure out whether I can maintain that in the summer months because the summer gets a little crazy with the heat. And then over here is Hoya calicina, which I have to be mindful of as well because that one I could easily forget about and uh, might be getting too much light in the summer months. So we'll have to keep our eyes on it. So the light that I get here in these southwest facing windows is pretty intense in the summer months. Obviously right now it doesn't look like much because it's an overcast day. So it's giving these plants a little bit more as if it were like a northeastern exposure. But um, even if you get back a little bit further right here, the light really dramatically decreases depending on the time of the day. So my experience of actually growing Hoya here has been a very good experience. So they have been relatively, they thrive here. Uh, actually, I had a Hoya Eskimo that I had a little bit further into the room and it didn't thrive. So that's why I think this shelf has become a little bit more of like my Hoya shelf and probably will continue to have more and more, more Hoya on here. Oh, I forgot one, <laughs> Hoya fungii. You could see it's starting to put out a tendril so it gets a little bit closer to all that good light. This is how it is. Like I totally can overlook a bunch of these Hoya that are growing around here. More Hoya in this room, not as much though. This is Hoya crassicollis, which could use, I think, a little bit more light, so I'm gonna be moving this. I am planning on getting a shelf on one of the walls that I could actually be growing a little bit more Hoya. And this is Hoya multiflora, which I think probably doesn't mind this little area over here. Doesn't get a tremendous amount of light, but I do get southwest facing light that comes in and it can be pretty intense. And then during the afternoon, the light kind of comes in a little bit deeper into the room and actually lights up and gives a little bit more of a gentle light. This is my pride and joy, this Hoya right here. I'm actually not quite sure what um, cultivar it is, but I recently read retrellis this is retrellis even a word I actually recently retrellis this and broke a lot of the stems off so I am going to be doing a lot of cuttings for this for my the plant swap in New York which I don't even know if tickets are still available but if you're in New York and you're interested plant swap on April 27th which is gonna be fun so I will be trying to find the idea of this species beforehand, but it hasn't actually flowered yet, which I'm really bummed by because it's so huge. Uh, so I might have to like stress it out a little bit more because sometimes if you stress your Hoya a little bit, it then starts to flower because it's kind of putting out um, this uh, signal where it's like, oh, I might have to actually put out some pollen um, go to seed, that type of stuff. So sometimes stressing it out might mean giving it a little bit more of a colder night. Sometimes stressing out might be a little bit more in um, sunlight. It actually really depends on the species. I have some more Hoya here and we're gonna see how they do. But uh, you'll notice I have a little humidifier here for some plants that actually need a little bit more higher humidity. And I noticed that these little Hoyas, I have like Hoya mini bell right here. And then which one's this one? Hoya pusilla, yeah. These I um, had growing elsewhere and they just, I felt like they just needed more humidity because they were getting like super uh, thin. So I wanted to do that and I think that they really benef benefited from the humidity. Hoya linearis, I read that they are in the monsoon season. So sometimes they get like this 
a little bit more mist and that's how they actually get their water. And that would make sense to me because they have this kind of really thin, almost like Tillandsia like air plant leaf and they might actually get the mist that way. So I think that's um, kind of the conditions that I'm gonna grow it in and we'll see how that works out. This one is an unidentified Hoya and it definitely needs a lot more humidity I found out. And this is Hoya sangii and also needs a little humidity. You could see that this is really drying out and I'll need to actually water these a little bit more. So some Hoya, I think more than others, are a little bit more challenging and I'm really looking forward to kind of experimenting because I'll be getting in some more cuttings from, from folks and that's a cool thing. I don't have a lot of space anymore in my place so getting a small little cutting of Hoyas are quite wonderful because they don't need too many nodes in order to be able to actually get a nice rooted cutting. All right, tiny little room here but I have quite a few Hoyas because I get similar light to in the kitchen obviously because this is a northeast facing window. This is Hoya Carnoso Crinkle, which I also have out in the kitchen. And somebody said this is Hoya Pachycleta, but I'm still going to run an ID analysis on this because I think Pachycleta gets a little red around the margins and is not fuzzy, but I could be wrong. Um, this is Longifolia, Hoya Longifolia up here. Hoya Lacanosa, right over here, hanging out of the frog's mouth. Oh, here's a little Hoya right here, Coronaria, a little cutting. Hoya neobudica right here. Oh, you know, and they have another one in the kitchen that I just remembered, but um, yeah, I'll probably be growing. Oh, here, here's a Hoya carnosa variegata. And here's a Hoya mini bell, which I also have growing in the back room. Oh, there's so many kind of hiding out. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to cap it there. I definitely have some more growing around the house, but I'll just have to do a continuation of the Hoya tour. I'm also going to be getting some more cuttings as well, so I'll be looking forward to showing you there those. But um, right now, I'm going to water my plants and pack up.